This is Paul Martin and Ray Oompa the Roadie for the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. You're Oompa Pying again, huh? I am. It's an Oompa Pa. Are you calling me Pa? Maybe. Well, it's got a UL on the end. It's Paul. Oh, Oompa, Oompa Paul. <laughs> Something like that. It might be a different genre of music. Yes. So uh, who we uh, who we talking to today? Well, it's not all total oompa pa w- w- with our guest today. He's uh, quite eclectic. Oh, is he? Yes, very. Uh, I mean, he he plays a myriad of genres of music. He appeals to a plethora of audiences. Well, you like using those big words, don't you? I got the I got a new calendar for uh, Christmas. It gives me a new word <laughs> a new, every day. A new ca- oh, no, oh, I see. So I like I like to use them. Okay. So, so yeah, th- this week we're um, Papa, one of those words. It was, as a matter of fact, it was. I think it was uh, the third day or something like that okay. of this month. Yeah, it was um, right. Papa. Yeah, gives you the definition and stuff. All right, cool. So today we sat down and talked with Mr. Frank Rossi, Frank, Frank Rossi. the Entertainer. Frank the Entertainer. That's right. He is a, uh, and that he is. He uh, he grew up playing accordion. Uh, also plays some keyboards now, though, and he is an entertainer and, and plays all kinds of genres of music, not just the oom papa stuff. No, no, no. I just like to say oom papa, right? But um, but he does some of that as well. He'll play the beer barrel polka, and then he'll go into some Michael Jackson or some uh, Stairway to Heaven, Stairway to Heaven, some Led Zeppelin, some Elvis, whatever it is, uh, whatever it takes. That's what he does because he's, he's the entertainer who likes to please the audience. That's right. And that's what it's all about, pleasing your audience. That's correct. Just like we do here. We please our audience that listens to our podcast every I, week. I hope we do. I'm sure we do. I haven't heard anything negative. No. Just positive. That's so good. speaking of positive, we should positively listen to what Frank had to say. Okay, let's do that. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're speaking with uh, accordion legend. Frank Rossi. How are you, Frank? Hey, Frank. Hello. Hi, guys. Thanks. Glad to be here. Thank you. Hey, good to have you. Oh, yeah. Hope you had a nice holiday. I did. It was just uh, fantastic. And, uh, you know, music is what uh, connects us all. That's right. Now, you've been playing for quite a few years, have you, Frank? I have. So the story goes, when I was seven... Uh, how old were you when you started playing, both of you? I started playing when I was about, I think, eight years old. Okay. I'd, I'd say about 12. Yeah, I was seven. So uh, my godmother, because cause my, uh, my cousin, he was a great uh, guitar player, and all I wanted to do was play guitar or drums. And my mother came back. She said, Frankie, we got this from Symphony School of Music in Chicago Heights. It says, you just won six free music lessons. I'm like, great. I go, is it guitar or drums? She goes, well, it says accordion. <laughs> I go, what's an accordion? <laughs> right? She goes, no, no, it's... Okay, so you have the piano on the right hand. The left hand is two rows of bass. My mother was, she knows the music. Two rows of bass and a row of chords. So you have a piano guitar and bass guitar i go oh that was kind of hard she goes if you can't do it i go no i can do it (laughs) (laughs) when i was seven she sold uh, you on it huh she sold me and my dad was like whatever you you, you, but you're still going to be in sports i go yeah dad don't worry so (laughs) it's funny because they give you a little red one right and it's a 12 bass and and believe it or not I, I, I took to it, and uh, it was so much fun. I, I'd run home from school at lunch and play. Uh, my poor neighbors, I'm hearing birds. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's not me. I don't know what that is. That's interesting. Or a squirrel. <laughs> I, I, it might be here. Who knows? <laughs> I would run home from school at lunch 
in practice. And my neighbors, uh, later, I apologized to all of them. And now they're like, thank God you got better because it was rough. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever learn the guitar? So, yeah. No. No. No, I, I've got a few. I've got a few. I've got a, a bass. I've got, you know, you know, I love all, all types of music. And uh, so you started on accordion, not keys. I thought maybe you started on keyboard. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. No, I started on accordion. And uh, later, you know, I went to Springfield and they had this uh, Illinois State Fair. And I, and I won a first place. The first two years, I got fourth place. And this one little Polish girl beat me. And the last year, it was two people on the stage. And either someone got sixth or first. And I'm like, I got sixth. But no, I, I won. So then I started playing, and I loved it. Just just loved it, playing gigs all over the place as a young kid. And then eventually, I uh, studied some jazz piano and uh some of my buddies are like, you got to do rock. I'm like, I love it, but I never play it. They said, you can do it. So uh, that's well, how that worked. Well, you probably grew up with rock and roll, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, rock and roll, funk, everything. And we, we, I grew up in Chicago Heights. Right. We, a lot of music, a lot, lot of my family's musicians and, uh, and then, you know, all our fan, all our friends um, we migrated. All, all the musicians, we all kind of hung out. Although I wasn't a true rocker, they were like, "Hey, accordion's pretty cool." So, what was your that first was, uh, band that you had you put together or, or joined, or what? Uh, <laughs> and how old were you? That's a that's a great story. There was a couple when I was. Uh, There's a guy, Mark. What the heck's his last name? He played really fine guitar, and and I we got together, and he said uh, he was older than me. He goes, Frank, we're doing all this. We're doing some rock covers, <laughs> and he goes, Do you play keyboard? I go, No, I I just play accordion. So we we had fun. So I kind of that's where I expanded, you know. I expanded and I, I started playing some rock, and he was playing some jazz and. It was fun. Later on, I played with uh, a guy who was a trumpet guy. He was he was pretty good. But then this girl, Linda Thompson, her uh, her father was a very good vibes player, and she was a drummer from Dalton, lived right across from Thorn Ridge High School. And uh, we started playing, and she was really really good. So then from there, you know, other guys came into the mix and. Uh, um, I never, I, I actually was going to play with this one band and I, I remember going and uh, they were playing some uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears. And the guy goes, well, where's your axe? I go, well, here it is. And he goes, well, uh, all right. So we tried it and they were like, you need to go practice. <laughs> they were like in their 20s and I was like 15 or 14. So, but it was cool, you know, and uh uh, who didn't love all the local bands? I did. I, I you know, I loved the band. What were they called? M and R Rush. I might have heard of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they were were, pretty, yeah. I think yeah. they played my prom. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I know a few of those guys. <laughs> yeah, and then Artie Baldacci with Hartsfield. I'm sure you know. Everyone does. And, I, Artie, uh, Artie actually grew up uh, about about five houses down. He was on the corner. I was in the middle of the block. Well, you know what? In, in Roseland. Yeah, here's a good story. Do you know Neil Holmquist? Great yeah. drummer. Yeah. Neil's wonderful. So we're in the, this is 1984 or so, maybe before that. We were on 51st and Kesey in the accordion factory, Italo American. Neil said, Hey, Frankie, play something for this guy. I go, Nah. So I played it, and I played it for the old man, Joe Romagnoli, who, he made all the accordions and he goes, Neil goes, what do you think? This guy's great. And he goes, well, you're good looking anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I never forget. And he goes, if you want to, you're going to love this. He goes, if you want to be good, you want to really be good. You got to study with one guy. So he shows me this picture of like a hundred accordion players and this guy directing it. Guess who it was? Artie Baldacci's father. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Eddie Baldacci, who was a, just a 
genius. Um, his his oh, I studied with him. I had Dan, the odd his mom was a great pianist too. She sure was, Florence. Yeah. And her and his sister, uh, Sue, you know that. She was a great piano player and a at Home and Flossmore High School, she was the choral director. So the whole family. So I go to the family. Now, they lived in Chicago Heights. They moved from Roseland, and it was a block and a half from my folks. So I go there for a lesson. I'd have a – I'd record it. And I remember him going, hey, Kagoots, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I said, he goes, who's going to see this? Are you selling this? No, no. Then later, he taught me some jazz because he went to DePaul University. And then later I got the chance to play some gigs with Artie. So everything kind of, you know, meshed it came together. Full circle, right? It did. Yeah, Rosalind had another uh, really good accordion player, too. Dennis Many of Dennis DeYoung. <laughs> oh, my God. You want to hear a Dennis DeYoung story? Sure. This is a classic. So I'm playing for the Piumonte Sinel Mondo. This uh, Italian group, and I was at a... At a I think it was in South Holland and I'm playing accordion and this lady came up to me. And she said, man, you're really good. And I said, well, thank you. And I said, I'm just, I just, I have a lot of fun. And she goes, oh, my, my son played accordion, but he got the keyboard. I go, well, I, I got a keyboard too. She goes, but he got the big, he got the big speakers. I go, well, I have big speakers at home. I go, she goes, yeah, but I like what you play. I go, I'm sure he could play this. And she goes, yeah. I go, what's his name? And she goes, Dennis. I looked at her and I went, Dennis DeYoung? She goes, yeah, you know him? And I went, uh, and on the way to this gig, I was listening to Sticks. And I go, oh, oh my God. And I go, really? And so that was pretty cool. That was a, that was a pretty cool uh, day for me. And then I got to meet him later. And uh, yeah, he was really great. So, you know. Let me ask you this: um, uh, It's it's you're Italian, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and a lot of the great, like you said, the the Italians made the accordions, but was what? was was it very popular in the Italian community? Because I mean, we know it's popular in Polish and German communities, and and and. But what about uh, what about in the Italian community? Absolutely, At, in fact, uh, <clears throat> just from Roseland, uh, Lino Frigo. He played on WGN. He was a staff guy. Uh, uh, Bortolai, it's really spelled Bortoli, but everyone calls him Bortolai. He was uh, George and Frank. Yeah, I, all these Italians. In fact, when we went back where my mom and dad grew up in Pittsburgh, I went to the old neighborhood. It was like a, a little Roseland where they grew up in. And everybody played accordion. <laughs> I mean, it, it was like... Yeah. What, what do you got? And that's nothing, you know? Now, here's something interesting. My, my mother's side, they're Yugoslavian. So I have Croatian and Serbian and, and Slovenian blood also. So in Hammond, that's where a lot of my mom's relatives were, uh, in, in Gary and uh, uh, Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Well, I have these cousins who could play thirds faster than I could play single. And I'm like... Oh my yeah. God. So, <laughs> yeah. And it was funny because they never thought of me as anything but Italian, but I really had that Baltic influence in me. That's why me and Eddie Carosa are so good buddies. <laughs> right, right. Well, because uh, because we talked to him and and, and I mentioned that uh, about the about the the different ethnicities of of the accordion. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. very interesting that uh, that uh, it was so popular in the Italian community as well. It really was, and you know who was the most popular accordion player was Dick Contino. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> and you you remember? I mean, he was huge. He come out there. He he looked. He was like the Elvis, right? And he had his shirt down, and he's a big, strong guy. I'm like, that's who I want to be. So later. I didn't. Uh, I was like, "There's only one of him," so I decided instead of being with the open collar, open shirt, I wear tuxes. So sure. everyone's do. Everyone does what they do. Right. Yeah. You got to have your own image. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I have a lot of fun. Now, now you obviously picked up keyboards, like you said. From because I've seen. Uh, I've. I, I don't know that. 
I've ever seen you play live, but I've, I've seen many of your, your shows that you've put on Facebook and, and some of your streaming shows and what have you. And, yeah. uh, and, but you picked up keys from that, right? I did. I, <clears throat> you, you know, you saw me play at Vito and Nick's in Timley Park a long time ago. Oh, uh, yes, that's right. Remember that? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I, now that you mentioned it, well, I'm getting old. I get, you know. That's okay. yeah. that's have the seventies timers. was a terrible time, anyway. So <laughs> I know who knew. Who knew? I have some time. I, I remember. Then, sometimes I don't. You know. <laughs> it's 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 interesting how an accordion player can be a full time musician. It, I'm lucky. I just I'm very lucky. Now, so, now you play a variety of music, though. Uh, right. You play a lot of uh, more uh, modern music or or up to date music, I guess, whatever you want to call it, more yeah. pop music too, don't you? Sure, absolutely. You know what? I learned a long time ago that uh, the customer is always right. When you stroll in restaurants, you have to know everything. You don't have to. You don't have music in front of you. You know, when I walk the accordion, so uh, I've been known to play. Uh, all the single ladies on the accordion, you know, the <laughs> thing, and their way to have an accord. I mean, you know, anything right. that you guys would play, I would attempt. And it actually sounded pretty cool. Sure. And I find, I find that later, later, the accordion now is cool, but growing up, it was rough guys. You know that. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, and I remember, believe it or not, my mom is really cool. Seventh grade, they had a talent show, and they said, we want you to play. So I played this, like, Russian, ba 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 you know, real, uh, and everyone was clapping. My mother put me in a puffy shirt. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I'm like, Ma. And looking back, I'm like, was it pink, Ma? You know, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Like an episode from Seinfeld. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I saw that, and I looked at my wife. I go, oh, that was me. She goes, no, it was I go, yeah, honey, yeah, that was me. So <laughs> Back then, it was rough, but nowadays, you could sit back and laugh at it. I exactly. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of, uh, a lot of my buddy, the Wind Gypsies, uh, I, I sat in the studio with those guys and uh, I, just having fun because uh, people like us, we, we just enjoy music. And I love rock. I love rock. So, you know, and then even Zydeco, we did. A, oh, yeah. Zydeco you know, music, it, but according to popular in Zydeco music. Oh, my God. We did a, yep. this, uh, there's a band called Silver Strings and they do all country. And we did K Baby, K Paso, and you know, by the Texas Tornadoes. And uh, yeah, it was cool. That was cool. So. I have a lot of different guys that I work with and so, some guys sit in with me and uh, we'll go from being a, a country, a couple of songs, then we'll get a guy with the doing some rock. All of a sudden we're doing straight ahead jazz. I like what I do. So. And, uh, and now you mentioned the studio. Uh, have you done some recording? I have. <clears throat> in fact, uh, Neil Holmquist has a studio called Dungeon Recording in St. John, Indiana. And we did, uh, I did a CD just a little while ago at the beginning of the pandemic with Michael Vittori. Do you know Michael? He's with Midlife Crisis. Yes, we, great we, we interviewed them and, and Mike was there when we interviewed them, yes. Oh, they're great. Those guys are, they're my real dear friends. Uh, Mike and I do a lot of stuff together. His vocals are so amazing. And he really, he was the one who was instrumental for me to really play some uh, more modern music. And uh, how long has he been playing with you? I, he's probably been playing at least five years. Okay. At, at least five. I've had other drummers, uh, Tim Scarupa, and uh, he's he toured all over. He was in Vegas, and uh, he was with Ernie Anucci. Does that name sound familiar? Ernie was a guitar organist. A guitar organ. Did you ever hear one of those? Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys do, right? Mm -hmm. 
So, so you, you said you did some recording. Have you got any uh, CDs out available? Or? I do. I do. We just had a, I did a lot of, my latest one, uh, in fact, Eddie Carosa has one. Uh, it's just Mike and myself. It's available. I have a website. Go Is it uh, original music or? Uh... You know what? No, you know, I, I, no, I was going to. I have a son who writes original music. He's in L.A. And we're doing a couple projects right now. But it was mostly, it was, this CD, you feel like you're at a gig. Because I had people clapping and I did some polkas and then we did some love songs and uh, some rock. And, uh, you know, we got, I think we got extra money for playing, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Mustang Sally. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a popular one. No, wait one. a minute. He won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a popular one. So I know I know uh, uh it's it's probably been a little bit tough during this pandemic, but how how are you surviving? How are you surviving well, this COVID thing and, and are you playing much or anything? Yeah, you know what? It it's been tough, no doubt. But I see during the day I play for senior communities. Right. And yeah, I'm I'm fortunate. <laughs> And a lot of them, in fact, I just did it yesterday. I'll record a show at my studio at home, and I'll upload it to YouTube, and, I, and I, I'll sell it to a community. And I'll have the birthdays, and I'll give shout-outs, just like I'm there. Uh, okay, that's cool. It's been, it's been working out really well. And then uh, I've been playing up until this last month outside and right. strolling around buildings. And, and sometimes I'll have my uh, whole setup. Uh, if it's if, when it was real hot, I'd, you know, I'd have the tent. And when it was real cold, I had uh, all bundled up. But I've been finding a way. It, it's been uh, it's been tough, but uh, I, I've been doing it long enough, like you have, that it's people are calling me. I'm like, OK, let's do it. Right. Go ahead, you have to cancel a lot of shows. Uh... Yes. Yes. It, that was rough because, you know, restaurants, we know and, and, you know, so it's been really it's been it's been tough. But I think the thing is, we all want to get past this and we all want to be safe. So we just have to do what's best. And uh, some places I'll play and they have the door open. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they said you can do that, which which is great. What do we always say? If you pay, we play. So <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's a matter of uh, it's a matter of just keeping and moving on, you know, and I have this thing called Fridays with Frank that uh, Paul yeah, mentioned. I was going to say you do some streaming stuff, though, too, right? Yeah, I do. I do. And it's you know what? It's, it's pretty. And I'll have a guest. Of someone come in. We we did it for all those Fridays in a row, and this Friday we're going to do it. As a, as a matter of fact, some t- and I'll say, okay, this time we're going to have Dave Molinari. This this guy will play sixties rock. He'll join me, or John Barbush. He's a leader of a big band, the MSO. So it'll change it, you know. And uh, Are but I'll horn, get you know, horn I'll, players or, or yeah, oh, okay. <clears throat> John Barbush is a trombonist. Right. Then I have trumpet players, Fred Cantu, and uh, a few other ones, uh, John Trimble, and really, really good guys who will come in and we'll just have a ball and, and we'll take requests. And as they come in, the show just changes. I say you have to be versatile. That's the truth. That's the truth. That sometimes we get caught up. Some of my buddies call and we do a little more rock, but then I got to bring it back. I got to do some ethnic, you know, they may want to hear uh, some accordion stuff. They're like, Hey, what about the accordion? So, <laughs> you know, that's the, that's my balancing act, you know? So, uh, well, that's good because you can please a lot of people that way. It's true. It's true. I, I you know, being a musician is, is, is great. And, and seeing people happy is just, you know, it's 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 what we do, and we're 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 the luckiest people on this face of the earth, and we know it. Hey Ray, Ray, what are you doing? 
I'm getting my bluegrass on. I'm playing my banjo, except there seems to be something wrong with the strings. Well, you know, Ray, GHS makes strings for all types of instruments. Electric and acoustic guitar, bass guitar, mandolin, ukulele, and even banjo. Then I'm getting new GHS strings and my banjo will sound better. Uh, I don't think it's the strings, Ray. GHS are easy to play with rich, full balance tone, available in many different gauges. Great for all musical styles, so if you play... Play with the best. Play GHS strings. So how long have you been playing uh, professionally? When I was 12, I remember playing. Could you imagine getting married and hiring a 12-year-old to play your music? (laughs) A 12-year-old. What? Uh, Yeah. And I remember it was at the Wayside Chapel in Palos. Right. Remember that place? Sure. And I remember... I had some pretty good teachers. And one guy said, beginnings and endings. Don't worry about the, don't worry about the metal. <laughs> I, went, I went there in a white tux. I was a young kid. And I knew like, you know, 12 songs. And I was so happy when someone said, can you play for our first song close to you? Remember the Carpenters? And I'm like, okay. oh, baby. <laughs> You knew that one, right? <laughs> I did. I knew that one. A roll at the barrel, maybe you know. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> uh, that that's awesome. But you make it work. You make it work. You make it work, right? Yeah, it's that's yep. the name of the game. It's the name of the game. So you can. So basically, since you've been twelve, you've been doing this professionally. I have. Or, yeah. Uh, yes, and so what I did is uh, high school. And then I went to college. I'm like, come on, Dad. He's like, no, you have to have a backup. Uh, my dad was always a very smart man. He worked at Ford Motor Company in the Heights. And he goes, don't have a strong back and a weak mind. I'm like, Dad. He goes, you have a strong mind. You need to use it. I go, Dad, I love playing music. He goes, music's always going to be there, but get a job. So I did. I went to school and I. Where'd you go? Then I, Where'd you go to college? I went to Eastern Illinois University. Oh, okay. It's not Charleston, yeah. sure. Yeah, Charles, it was it was a good school. I took one music class. I took one. I took finance and you know, because I yeah. I remember being in this class. Well that's part of that's part of the music business too, is being a finance guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. <laughs> no you're one in the business. Thousand. No one in the business. It is a bit you're right. Yeah. I remember being in class and there was a girl from Arlington Heights. You know, right away, she's out of my category. You know that. She's out of my league. And and, and I remember she was taking a piano, and, and, and I was and I was acting like a dumbbell, like I didn't know anything. And uh, after class, it was, no, everyone left, and I had a free hour, and I was playing some blues or boogie, and I heard that someone walking in, and it was a teacher, and he was like, you know, you didn't fool me for a second. He goes, you're here for that girl in the front row, aren't you? <laughs> I go, yeah. And he goes, pal, he goes, you have, you don't have a chance. <laughs> I go, but I play the accordion. He goes, you know what? You're in trouble. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> so yeah. you, can, you can read music, right? I can. Do you still read music or do you mo- play I, mostly by ear? You know what? I, I do both. I do both. I I read a lot, but you know, music's from the heart. All right. And a lot of my rocker guys have taught me how to really use your ears better. Cause you know, we're playing a song and they just start playing. I go, well, how do you know? Well, can't you hear the chord changes? I'm like, I never tried. He goes, you gotta try. Right. It's, it's nothing. There's a guy, a buddy of mine. He actually passed away, Jimmy Henry. Uh, great guitarist, uh, phenomenal. We used to work at the studio called Profiles in Orland, part of DJ's music. I don't know if you remember. Right. Oh, sure. Jimmy would just go up there and just just play. He goes, Frankie. He goes, try it. So I tried it, and I'm like, I'm getting it. He goes, just do it every day. And then, and then uh, Artie Baldacci's father, Eddie, I would call him on the phone. He'd go, hello. And I'd, I'd play a C on the piano. And he goes, what do you want? I go, he goes, C, what else do you need? <laughs> like, he had perfect pitch. Yeah. And he goes, you can learn to have relative pitch, you know. Like, sure. 
here comes the bride. That's a perfect fourth. Ba-da. Right. I learned a lot of music. You know, a, a big time in my life is my son went to the theater conservatory in Chicago at Roosevelt. Right. And all these brainiac kids, because it's real hard to get in there, they had this advanced theory class. And my son goes, my pops will know this stuff. So they called me on a Skype back in the day. And, and, and I knew it. And I was and I was showing these kids who were a couple kids are on Broadway now. You know, I'm like, wow. Yeah, I, I think a lot of us grew up. I know I did. I grew up reading music and learning how to yeah. read, playing uh, uh, you know, camp town races on guitar. and whatever. Right. <laughs> and uh, but uh, but now you put you put sheet music in front of me and I go, oh, wait, how about I come back tomorrow? I'll have it. I know it. I'll no, have it no, I, it's, been, it's been so long. You know? You, you, you know, another thing when I get music now, it's lead sheets. I don't even read the bass because, right? I know what to do. Uh, you get the high end, you get the treble clef, and you're good on the bass, right? <laughs> that's right. I'm lucky because when I hear a song, I I migrate to the bass. I I hear the bass. So when I play my keyboard, my left hand, I split it and I play bass. I take a lot of pride in that. Uh, of course, I don't play like a regular pianist because I'm not. You know, I'm an accordion player who. I play with all these bass players, and uh, remember Johnny Falstrom? Oh, He's sure, great. Yeah. Sure, we interviewed we interviewed John. Uh, oh, boy. oh man, Quite He's nuts. Long. He's the greatest. That guy. That guy. Yeah, we played a last year. We played a gig together, a jazz gig. And you know what? Some of the charts he was reading. I'm like, right? He goes, "No, I want him to be good for you, Frankie." <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the that's, author of EADG4. That's right. Yeah, he's uh, he's quite a musician. What a uh, man! Oh man, I remember him we, back in the Bernie Glenn days, and uh, yeah, he's he's something else. So, isn't it great how my buddy Mike Vittori always says music connects people? He's right. Oh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we we all know it, you know, and as you really are into it. You can appreciate other styles of music. Um, hey, when I met my wife, she came up to me and, uh, again, way out of my league. Trust at a, me. At a gig? Uh, no, actually, it oh. was uh, – She, I know, right? She was uh, in college a couple years younger than me, and we went there to visit some. And I and I saw her. I'm like, who is she? They go, yeah, Frank, some music. She goes, what do you play? And I looked right in her eyes. It's the first time I ever said that because I would always say, "Oh, I'm a keyboardist." <laughs> I looked at her, I go, "I play the accordion," and she went, "Wow, cool! Do you play any Dead or do you play any Zeppelin?" <laughs> and I go, <laughs> "Sure." Uh. She, my wife is a rocker, uh, <laughs> so that's it was pretty cool, you know. And, and then she was like, "Wow, man, you could play some cool stuff." I'm like, "Oh my God, this is a dream." Like like George uh, on Seinfeld, when George met the girl, I'm I'm out of work, I have no money, I live with my mother. Oh hi George. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So now now you get into some, uh, you can play some Sinatra and some other stuff, don't you? I do. Uh, um, I do. Play a variety. Of music. I, now you said you mentioned jazz. Um, yeah. I didn't know that you really did any jazz. I do. And you know what? <clears throat> I work with some a couple of jazz guys. <clears throat> uh, one sax guy, Dennis Perani. When Dennis was on a stage, he could play everybody's instrument better than them. Everybody. Wow. wow. He went to Vander Cook, uh, and he was a band director. But he taught me a lot. He would he would write out my voicings and my changes, and I'm like, well, wow. I mean. He like opened up a whole new door, you know. It's like I didn't know this existed. Yeah, we and there's all levels of jazz, as you know. You know, I don't play bebop like, but uh, I can I can fumble around and do okay. But I know I know you're not you're not um, the traditionalist and just playing uh, polkas and what have you. Correct. I know you play a lot of uh, yeah. Like I said, and you know I, what? <clears throat> you, you Paul, you're right. But see, but someone goes, hey Frank. Can you play She's Too Fat for Me, Polka? Sure. I Yeah, sure. I can. 
that's what makes the world go around. And in my, in my little world, uh, that's when I met Eddie Carosa. We were like, we're like brothers, man. Cause he plays more polkas, obviously he's the polka King, but we, we get it. Cause in fact, he calls me F T E Frank, the entertainer. <laughs> there you go. And I tell him E T G Eddie the Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen some. Uh, you, I've seen a few YouTube videos of you two together playing yeah. gigs. Yeah, yeah. We, you know what? And it's all about, it's all about having fun. I I remember when I was studying some of this real difficult stuff. I wanted people to know I can do this classical on my accordion. People don't care. They want to be entertained, or they want to hear something good. It brings them back, you know, to a better time or a, you know, simpler time, right? Or brings right, them up, they, you know. Brings them up. Right. Brings them forget, up. I, forget about their troubles for a few minutes or an hour. You're or right. So that, right. We're, we're so lucky. I see, and you know, when I work, uh, especially in senior homes, I work all different levels. I work, oh, some of them are over 55, and I'm like, oh, boy, <laughs> I'm ready for this. <laughs> but you can see people who maybe. Oh, I they thought you meant be. different floors, first, second, third floor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was good. Oh, my God. So some people, you can see they're down, right? They're down. And it's like, you want to bring them up? I remember some lady looked at me once, and she goes, you're not Ray. I go, no, I, I'm Frankie. She goes, ah, we don't want you. I go, okay. yeah. I go, well, I'll do a good job. Ah, you talk too much. I'm telling the truth. And I go. I went inside and I saw the director and I said, man, I go, hey, uh, a rough crowd. She looks at me and she goes, hey, look, uh, this is when I was packing it in, bringing my equipment in. She goes, oh, there's a lady, Sophie. She hates everybody. Don't talk to her. I go, <laughs> is that her? She goes, yes. Yeah. I go, we've met. <laughs> yeah, we've already met. That's right. I go, you know what I'm going to do before I end this gig? Sophie's going to be my friend. She goes, you know what? You're good, pal, but you ain't that good. <laughs> it'll never happen <laughs> so I went up to her I played a song for the lady next to her and the lady on the other side and I went up to her and I said I have a song just for you I said what's your name and she wouldn't even answer me I played baby face baby face you yeah. got the yes. and, and her arms were crossed and soon enough she didn't want it but they were uncrossing and and I and I gave her shout outs and I paid attention, which nobody ever did. Right. And uh every time I played there, once a month, she'd bring me candy. Now I didn't eat this candy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where it came from. Yeah. But or or from when. <laughs> or from when. <laughs> this director looked at me and she goes, I'm a believer. I go, well, you know, it's not me, it's the accordion. She goes, whatever it is, she goes, I've been telling everybody. She goes, this lady hates everybody. I'm like, well. Well, that could be part me. of the problem, too. I mean, right off yeah. the bat, when they're saying, no, she hates everybody, well, then people, are, they don't want nothing to do with her. Just let so you avoid her. That's right. You That's know. why you're Frank the Entertainer. Well, <laughs> you're right, I guess. I don't know. You know what? You know what? I'm just a regular guy. Someone said, what do you want to be known as? Just a regular guy taking care of his family. That's all. And having some fun. Having some fun. We all know when you get up, it's a choice. You get a red light. Are you going to, like, you know, get upset? Or are you going to turn on some music and relax? <laughs> exactly. That's You guys know. You you live it. <laughs> so uh, have you got anything s scheduled coming up anywhere? I do. I, I do, uh, you know what? People can just go on my website. Can I give it out or? Oh, sure. sure. It's uh, it's a tough one. Frank Rossi Music dot net. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. And you're on Facebook too. I am on Facebook. I remember I didn't want to get on that. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm private. But my wife's like, you should try it. Well. It's been it's been pretty good. It's been a marketing tool, and I think I think I'm a charter member. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It, it, it's a ball, and I mm -hmm. I remember in the beginning, my wife's like, "We could talk to my friend Carol, Carol and Mike in Florida. This is great." 
I go, honey, you can pick up the phone and call him too, you know. <laughs> we got this thing, it's called, uh, you can see their face. I go, no way. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, yeah, at what we're doing right. here. look at what we're doing here today, yeah. Isn't this amazing? Yes. Now, do your kids play any music? How many kids do you have, first of all? <clears throat> yeah, thank you. I have my daughter, Nina. She's 25. She's a real good singer. In fact, she sang a lot on my uh, Fridays with Frank. And uh, right. she's she's a real sweetheart. Beautiful voice. Um, real smart. And my son, Vince. Uh, Vince is living almost 10 years. He's 30 now, this guy, in uh, Los Angeles. He's a, he's a character. He's he's done a lot of work. He's got a lot of originals. Uh, his song, Holiday, that he did, he was with a band called Winslet. It's really, it's a good Christmas uh, song. But he did, he's done a lot of stuff. He did a mashup. He, he's very, very talented. And all his friends are these movie star kids. So we go visit. And my wife's like real excited. Look, this is this one. Like, I don't even know these people. <laughs> what instrument does your son play? His main is main is singing. He plays a little piano, but he writes. He's a really good writer and a good singer. He uh, was he was interviewed uh, in L.A. on a radio show. And this lady has people on and, and it's all classic rock. Our stuff. Right. Right. When some current. And it's and it's a questions, you know, and and he was on the show and he knew every answer. And she was like, Vince, how do you know this? And this kid credited me and my wife. He goes, well, I grew up with rock. He goes, are you kidding me? He goes, my walls were Led Zeppelin. And uh, <laughs> you see these they're like, really? He goes, yeah. And he goes, my dad taught me Sinatra and uh, jazz and. He goes, I even know Polkas. And the lady was like, how old are you? He, at the time, he was like <laughs> yeah. 27. She's yeah. like, you want a job? <laughs> so, I think that's the great thing about our age is, is we've grown up from from Elvis to the Beatles to Led Zeppelin to... You're right. To Beyonce and 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 Absolutely. Justin Bieber and and we and we've seen we've we've run the whole gamut really. <laughs> we right. have. And it's uh, amazing. And, and 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 like I said, even Sinatra and, and whatever. Uh, I mean, I, I love listening to Sinatra. You know, I've got so a program programmed on my uh, my serious radio. You yeah. know, I do too. Whenever I have people over for dinner, that's what's playing. That's the background music. Seriously, that's Sinatra. Right. It's it's true. I I personally uh, love Sinatra, but Dean Martin. Oh yeah. Uh, Everybody. Yeah. That. I mean, I love, I like Frank, but Dean's really got the voice. He's got it. And he's just, you want to be him, you know? And I, uh, yeah. I, I used to run the sound at the Blue Chip Casino. So I've worked with Jim Belanda. Uh, oh, yeah, he's great. And, uh, and Tony Ocean. I don't know if you know Tony. Oh, Ocean. wonderful. Mo, Mo Carrera. Mo Carrera, yeah. right, right. Yeah. But, Good guys. Yes. I'm lucky because, uh, again, this Facebook. I get to meet these North side guys. Let's face it. You know, we're, we're just South side guy. You know, I don't know. who. It goes uh, back to that girl from Arlington Heights. You know, you said you could talk to her now. I can't. I could. <laughs> oh my God. Can you believe that? You said you were from Chicago Heights. She said, where? Yeah, I know. <clears throat> she went, I remember going to college. Where are you from? The Heights. Oh, Arlington Heights. No, the yeah. real Heights. The wrong Heights. The real yeah. Heights. Okay, isn't that funny? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you're south, of, you're south of I eighty. How come you don't talk funny? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's true. Dems and does, and the, you know, my ma taught English, and she was like, "No, th this won't happen. This won't happen." And get rid of those chains. I'm like, "Okay, ma." <laughs> so, I remember at a, a turning point when I was about seventeen, betting on everything, you know had a big book, how I'm going to beat Vegas. I'm going to beat it because, you know, I'm good at numbers. 
come on. There's the, the. And I remember my dad looked at me and he goes, Frank, he goes, sit down. My dad was a man of few words. He loved sports, loved sports, loved everything. He goes, Frankie, he goes, you're hanging around some tough guys. Ah, Dad, I go, I can handle it. He goes, these guys are going to end up one of two places. And we both, we all know. I go, what is that, Dad? He goes, they're either going to be end up in the cemetery or in a penitentiary. So if you were with these guys, you better do something different when you're like, pal. Oh, so then I, I went to work at Ford. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to college. No way. Well, <laughs> that put me right in the college mode. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, whoa. And then, and then I always had music to fall back on. I remember this one guy, uh, Ray Bartis. He was a, a dentist in Olympia fields. He goes, Frankie with music. You always have a friend treat music with respect. You'll always, you'll never be lonely. And he goes, and all your friends, you're, you're going to have so many people with like-mindedness. Everything he said was right. Well, once again, uh, we can find you on um, frankrossi.net, right? Frank, Frank Rossi Frank Music. Frank Rossi yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And on Facebook? Yeah, it's just under Frank Rossi. Right. Um, and uh, and we'll, we'll catch some of your Fridays with Frank, uh, your streaming you. shows that you do. with uh, it, you, you, and Mike, you and Mike do those, right? Yeah, Michael Vittori. I tell you, this guy, you learn from everybody, you know, how he can go from singing Hey There, Lonely Girl, Michael Jackson, and, and he's up there, and then he could sing the blues, Down and Dirty. He's amazing. Uh, he's a, plus, he's the nicest guy I ever met. Yeah, he's a good guy. Good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. And the rest of the guys, I should mention Bruce Meyer, bass player. Uh, here I am on stage with Mike is a retired firefighter who bicycles miles. I mean, he's probably biking today, uh, 50 miles a day. Bruce Meyer was a pro golfer and uh, he runs 10 to more miles a day. And both of these guys, they go, hey, what do you want to eat? I'm like, I'm thinking cheeseburger, you know, whatever. <laughs> Pizza. This guy, he goes, no, I'll just have a salad with uh, with a little fish on top. And this guy's like, no, nothing. I'm like, so I got in better shape being with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I better do something. <laughs> How many miles are you running? I'm, I'm running my mouth. That's all I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. I, I, well, that's I, exercise. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> that burns calories. When you play the accordion, it it, it burns, you know? Sure. Yeah. And so, they're not the lightest things. No, they're not. They're not. I, yeah, I, had, I got rid of a few really heavy ones, but you know what? But uh, well, thanks for joining us today, Frank. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Well, thank you both very, very much. This was an honor. And uh, I'll see you both soon. Yep. And, yes, you uh, will. We'll see you out and about. I'm, I'm thinking hopefully this summer. Sounds great. Be somewhat back back to normal. Yeah, they will. They, they will. We're, we're going to hope. Yep. And hopefully we'll join you on Friday. Sounds great. I'll uh, I'll see you then. And uh, I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day, guys. You, you too. Thanks for joining us. Bye. My pleasure. And there you have it. There we have. There we have it. That's right. There I have it. The backstory. <laughs> the backstory behind the story. Uh, there was what we like to bring you here at the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast of Mr. Frank Rossi, the entertainer. The entertainer. Da 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 da. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're playing the entertainer song. I am. I I thought I was thinking of it. Was I actually? I thought it was just in my head. No, yeah, you, you're doing that out loud. Oh, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. But that was a lot of fun. Fun? That was a lot of fun talking to Frank. What is fun? <laughs> I think you were trying to say Frank and fun. At the same uh, maybe. I mean, there's a lot I of fun talking to funk. <laughs> well, sometimes when I eat, 
I get some front on my shirt, you know, it comes out whatever I'm eating, but, but that was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Talking to Frank and uh, getting some of the, uh, the more the story behind the story, like you said. That's right. And, uh, you know, even though it's like, uh, you know, a little different type of music than, you know, true rock and roll and stuff. I mean, look at all the people that he knows that we know, and (laughs) it just, it just all intermeshes. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It's a it's a small world in the in the music community, especially especially in the South Side music community. I think is because that's where we grew up. But but we love we love the North Side as well, and the West Side and the East. Well, the well, East the East Side, side you be in the lake. Well, kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Although there is an East Side, there is. But but that's what we bring you here at the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast is musicians and bands from uh, from Chicago land area. And we bring you their 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 stories, and trying to get some insight into uh, into their world. That's right. And when you have some time, check out the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route sixty six. Check out their website. They're uh, moving along really quickly over there, trying to get the place opened up. Uh, and actually, that's where our studio normally is, and we're hoping to get back to that very soon. So check them out on their website. Okay, we'll do that. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. We'll see you next Oompa. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. The Rock and Roll Chicago podcast does not own the rights to any of the music that's played on this podcast. The music is used to promote the band or musicians that are interviewed. Rock and Roll Chicago. Rock and Roll Chicago, my hometown. Well, I was born in the city. Go to Rock and City. Chicago, Chicago, I can roll inside the best year out around. 